All right, here we are in the poor man's gourmet kitchen. We're going to do chili rellenos today. I've got the chilies on the broiler pan. I've got some flour. I've got eggs, baking powder. I've got some Monterey Jack jalapeno cheese, some Spanish rice, uh, some water, and I'll be using that blender to, uh, well, we'll get to that here in a minute. First thing we want to do, broil. We're going to put these in the oven under a broil, and we're going to be uh, putting a little uh, crispiness on them. We want them a little bit black, give them that kind of fired look to them. It only takes a couple minutes, and we'll be flipping them back and forth, taking them in and out of the oven a lot making sure that we get all sides of the chilies. Okay, so let's go to the oven. Got that bad boy open. And get them started. All right, like I say, only a couple minutes. It takes about two minutes per side, if that. Just make sure you don't fry them. Just a nice, good, dark crisp. Okay, that should be perfect. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, see that? A good charred look real quick all over the top of it, real quick, huh? A couple minutes does that. That's why we do the broil. Gives it that old school over-the-fire type of crispiness. Now, they're pretty hot, but I don't care. I'm going to flip them over by hand. You're probably going to want to use some tongs or something, you know. You really care about your own safety here. I'm just going to flip each one of them and uh, throw them back in the oven. Okay, and here we go back in the oven. Same deal, just a couple minutes. Now, as they're getting charred on the outside, understand and realize and appreciate that these things are actually just getting cooked as far as softening up too. So, we'll check on them here in a couple more minutes. All right, it's been a few minutes. Let's check them out again, see where we're at. And that looks good, all right. Maybe just a little bit longer. All right, back out. Should be good to go. Now sometimes you can you can do this not just two, maybe three, and even four times if you want to keep flipping them back and forth. I'll decide here by the way it looks. I'm going to turn them. Because mostly you just want it all the way around it. And they're pretty decent. I think I'm going to go ahead and just roll with what we got right here. Okay. To the counter. Here we've moved them. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a towel over the top of them. Because that heat is still inside those. And I want to keep it that way. Because I want the actual chili to continue to cook a little bit. So they soften up. Okay. So we're going to do that for several minutes here. In the meantime, what you can do, which I've already done, is chop up your jack cheese. They're about the size of, of thick french fries. If you can imagine and think of what a Wendy's french fry looks like as far as their size, that's about what you want. And we're going to stuff two of these in uh, this pepper here as soon as they're ready to go, these chilies, with the rice. I'd stuff one in the front and uh, one in the back. And in the meantime, We'll wait for those chilies to soften up. Okay, that should be good enough. Voila. Guarantee what they've done is just softened up. Okay? You don't want it all crispy and brittle when you start working with these, okay? So all you're going to do, you're going to take it over here. And uh, with your uh, knife, you're going to make a, a slit, an incision here. <laughs> okay, you're going to make a slit down the side here. And you don't want to go all the way to the end. You want to just open it up so you can stuff it and close it back up so it doesn't fall open and fall apart when you're trying to fry these things after you batter it, okay? So let me get to that so you can see what it looks like. Okay, just like that. I just slid it open, opened it up. Unfortunately, I did exactly what I told you not to do. I tore it all the way down to here. But anyway, it happens, right? But still, you've got a whole open pocket here to now start with your cheese. I just put one right there and there in the bottom. And then I take my rice, and very carefully, without making a mess while I'm doing it one-handed holding the camera, stuff this bad boy. Now, I don't want it too full because I need to close the dang thing back up 
and uh, roll it in the flour and, and then and batter it and fry it. So we're going to go with, uh, let's see, about that much. You can tell by squeezing it, see if you can get a close on it, because all you've got to do is put one more piece of cheese in there, and then you're good to go. And uh, we'll show you the rest here in a minute. But in the meantime, I'm going to finish all these out to make a quick video here so you don't have to watch the whole process. Now this is the last one. Now let me make a small point about it. Now that it's all stuffed, as you can see, I've got it all finished here. You want to leave enough room inside these things so you can have a flap that folds over. The reason why this is important is because we're adding more weight by adding that rice in there. Now you can add chicken or beef or pork or some meat in there or bacon. I don't care what you add in there, but if you're adding more stuff other than cheese, they're going to get heavy, which means when you're handling them in the fryer, they're going to want to pop open. So you leave enough room to have a flap that can fold over and touch the other side like that, that's going to save you. Trust me. Okay, now i got everything back on the tray. Now, they got a little moisture in them, and you got to make sure that they are dry to make sure that the batter adheres to it, which is a real different batter. It's just straight eggs, but I'll show you that here in a minute. And the traditional way is to just roll these things in the flour and be very careful that you don't open it up and get everything inside but you just want to have it lightly floured over the whole thing make sure it's dry no big deal do it to each one of them okay all right I got them all dredged in flour now you want to make sure that you're paying particular attention to the open side in every one of these, every one of those flaps that we talked about, can just bust this thing right open at any time and you've got a mess on your hands, okay? So at that point, you know, you're going to think this is really messy and tedious and it's not something you ever want to experience again. So just be careful with it. As long as you do that and you pay attention to that side, you keep them held together while you roll them, while you batter them, while you fry them, these are awesome, okay? They'll be worth it. Now, if you want to eliminate uh, any stress or that, you can technically stick a toothpick right through it. Just make sure that you pull the toothpick out or whoever you're serving it up to knows there's a toothpick in it, okay? Nobody wants to be eating a big old uh, Sharpie. All right, now to the batter. Using a blender here for the batter, um, it's probably better to actually use a mixer. If you've got a bowl and a mixer, that's probably the way to go. But remember, this is poor man's gourmet kitchen. I'm on the road dealing with what I got. So luckily I've, I've even got a blender because I just went and bought one. But anyway, what we're dealing with is eggs, baking powder, water. And the thing is, is you want to separate it, separate the egg yolks from the whites. You've got the whites in here. I'm going to put a half teaspoon of baking powder in there. I'm going to put just a little bit of water in there. It's room temperature water. It's not much that I'm putting in at all. And we're going to blend this. Get it real frothy before I start adding those yolks. All right, if you can tolerate that noise, you can throw the yolks. Just a little bit at a time. real frothy, real bubbly, and uh, we're going to take this to the stove now. Hot oil on the stove. All right, let the magic begin. Now I put my batter in a bowl, I put the bowl in the pan, and I do that because I'm going to have the pan real close next to this hot, hot oil, and I don't want that egg mixture to just be cooking in that, uh, in that bowl, so I put it in this pan to separate, and the bowl stays away from the sides of the pan, that way the egg doesn't cook, okay? little trick it. Anyway, uh, here we go. I'm going to try to do this one-handed, which is really kind of a pain in the ass, um, because, like I said, you want to be real careful with that flap, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to dip them right in that egg mixture, okay? Just like that. And then we're going right in there. Alright, so just take a minute and then we'll flip it. 
And there you got it flipped over already. I had to use two hands for that one. Sorry I couldn't film it for you. But uh, all you do is you can fork in there, you can lift it up, and then you grab the stem with your other hand, and you just turn it right over. No big deal, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get that out of there. No big deal. Uh, you can't tell me that that doesn't look good. There you have it, folks. Right here in the poor man's gourmet kitchen, chili reinos.